Welcome back. I have a special treat today. I am here in Arlington, Texas at the grand opening of Wallbox's new 130,000 square foot manufacturing facility. This factory can right now manufacture 250,000 <laughs> units, but by the end of 2029, well, by 2030, they estimate it'll be able to make more than 1 million chargers. So what we're gonna do here today is take a walk around of the facility. We're gonna take a look at exactly how they make the Pulsar Plus, which is the only unit they're actually making here now. What you see behind me are all four of Wallbox's current chargers. Two of them are DC fast chargers. One is a DC bi-directional level two charger, and the other one is the Pulsar Plus, which I've reviewed here on State of Charge. So I'm here at the ribbon cutting ceremony for the factory, and we just witnessed the mayor, along with Wallbox representative, doing a ribbon cutting, but it wasn't actually a ribbon cutting. What they did was they plugged in a ceremonial plug. Well, now we're gonna take a walk around the factory. We're gonna see exactly what Wallbox has accomplished. We're gonna talk about where they're going with this factory. And we're even going to get a demonstration of their new Hypernova, which is a 400 kilowatt DC fast charger. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. Okay, so now I've walked into the inbound warehouse. This is where Wallbox takes in all the supplies to make the charging stations. Now take a look behind me at all of those boxes. There are rows and rows of components and the fact that they keep such inventory of parts allows them to continue to manufacture at the full rate, even through the current supply chain problems. They're able to continue to make their Wallbox units at the rate that they projected and had hoped to. So I'm here today with Doug Alfaro, General Manager of Wallbox North America. Doug, thanks for coming on with me. The last time we talked was about two months before the world shut down at CES 2020, and I, I appreciate you coming on again. Absolutely. So I'm here in this new beautiful facility. I tell you, I'm impressed. It's huge. It's spotless. Well, I guess it should be because it's new. Um, you're pumping out Pulsar Pluses over there. I see there's mounds of Pulsar Pluses. But what I really want to talk about is what we're standing in front of, the new uh, Hypernova. It's a 400 kilowatt unit. Um, tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, absolutely. We're super excited and super proud to be introducing uh, new products like Hypernova, uh, but also the capacity to build these products here in America, in Arlington, Texas, mm -hmm. with our new facility here. Uh, the facility is a 130,000 square foot facility capable of, at launch, 250,000 units coming out the door. And you've already seen, we've got first units for shipment, ready to go to customers. Uh, but also, at full capacity, we'd be able to crank out about a million chargers out of this very facility, wow. which is super exciting, uh, right? We have phase one, which is what you're looking at, two. We can actually duplicate that into phase two, and we actually have access to this entire building. The equipment that you make here, is it gonna be just for the North America market, or are you going to be shipping it overseas, or this is just to supply North America? This is just to supply North America. Actually, this is a strong bet mm -hmm. for how the market's going in terms of e-mobility and the growth of EV purchases yeah. in the US, as well as monumental new programs like the NEVI infrastructure program, mm -hmm. the Inflation Reduction Act. Yeah. Those are all investments towards clean technologies like EV charging, clean manufacturing, like the jobs we have going on in here, mm -hmm. uh, where we're actually uh, forecasting 250 jobs by 2025, and at full capacity, over 700 jobs in this facility. Really so good we're for the making local. a really strong bet on local production, local manufacturing uh, in this technology. That's great for the local economy. I also noticed you've got EVs in here from all different manufacturers, even some that haven't been released yet. Pretty cool in the corner. There's a canoe over there, there's a Fisker, really cool. One of the problems I've seen in the industry was when new EVs get in introduced, they have communication problems with DC fast chargers. Mm -hmm. I've been on press drives where I can't charge the car, and then I find out, Electro America says, well, we've never tested that car with, with, uh, with the charger yet. The, co the company didn't supply me with it. Are you, um, what are you doing with regards? Are you working close with the manufacturers to make sure you can test for compatibility before they go to market? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's something that we're actually very proud of. So our vertical integration not only includes the production 
of the chargers, but also the software and firmware behind that. So of the protocols development, all the validation and testing. So in this very facility, we have validation testing lab where we're able to do cross-validation testing across different automakers and brands. Also in our offices in California, we're able to offer that for automakers that are either stationed there or have easier access to vehicles there. Mm -hmm. So we have multi-points of testing, validation, to ensure that there's compatibility for great products like you see here with Hypernova. Okay, well listen, thank you for your time. And uh, now am I gonna get a nice tour around this whole facility? I've seen this room, but there's other rooms and everything. We, get, we, we gonna get a nice tour? Absolutely, you're right. gonna be able to see where the product is made, so you're gonna get to see where raw materials come in. Mm -hmm. Supply chain has been a huge constraint for the industry. Yeah. We've been able to actually weather that, maintain supply throughout all of this downturn. You're gonna get to see where it's produced, so the production lines over there, uh, where we're using human machine interface, so we have folks there, but also machines that are supporting the volume, testing, uh, reliability for our products. You're gonna get to see uh, where we're gonna be building our DC fast chargers, so today, uh, just to give a couple data points on Hypernova, this is gonna be introduced in the second half of next year. Mm -hmm. This is a 400 kilowatt system. Mm -hmm. uh, this is basically capable of introducing almost 100 miles of range in only five minutes at full power. Yeah. So it's really incredible mm -hmm. uh, for- It's needed though. For long distance you fast know, it's, charging. It's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it seems like it's, a, it, it's where the industry is going right Absolutely. now. I just DC fast charged a Hummer EV this week and it peaked at 367 kilowatts. Wow. So, you know, it's it, it's not yeah. quite there yet, but you, yeah. you're ahead of even the best today. That's right. So that's kind of future proof. Getting ready for the future. So, well, listen, thank yeah. you for your time. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Now let's go see the rest of the factory. Thanks. I then took a walk down the Pulsar Plus assembly line. It's actually two separate lines. The one on my left was actually imported from an existing Wallbox factory in Europe. And Wallbox did that so they could hit the ground running with this new facility. However, the line on my right, which was just recently added, was manufactured in the US and assembled at the factory recently to double the initial Pulsar Plus output, which currently stands at about 5,000 units per week. Now, in order to test the units properly, Wallbox actually powers them up as if they were charging an electric vehicle. Now, doing that uses energy, but Wallbox is able to recycle the energy as much as 90% of it and use it for multiple tests. And the one thing I found really interesting is that each station has a computer monitor that is checking in real time the quality of the assembly and the unit doesn't move to the next station until it gets the okay. So there's not only a quality control test at the end of assembly, but multiple checks throughout the entire process. And moving down the assembly line, we see the final testing taking place and then workers on both lines installing the covers with electric torque wrenches that apply just the right amount of force so they're not over tightened. And finally, we can see the Pulsar Pluses being placed in the boxes at the end of the line, ready to go. Okay, and what I see here is the Quasar 2 from Wallbox. Now, those who follow my channel might have remembered that I talked to Doug Alfaro three years ago at CES when they were introducing the Quasar, which was a bi-directional DC charger. That charger only delivered, I think it was 7.6 kilowatt. Maybe it was 9.6. In any event, this new version now can deliver up to 11.5. So it's a 48 amp charger that is bi-directional. If you notice, this one now has the CCS connector. The original Quasar was Chatamo only, but now the Quasar 2 is CCS only. Now this, this is not available yet. As a matter of fact, Wallbox really didn't want to talk much about it today because they're here to discuss the factory, they're here to discuss the Hypernova, their new DC fast charger, but we are going to talk about this with Wallbox in a couple of months. We're gonna do a full video on it. I'm gonna get a demonstration when the unit's ready to be made. They have, they're not making this yet. I think it's still in the final validation stages here, but soon they will be producing this in 2023. We'll get our hands on one and do a full review of it. With its bi-directional charging, I'll be able to use it with my Ford F-150 Lightning, which has bi-directional charging capability. But for today, we're just looking at the shiny box. We're not getting too many details. Okay, on with the factory tour. Now let's take a quick look at the validation area for the Hypernova. We're gonna plug in a Kia EV6 and see how that works. 
Okay, so now we're gonna check out the Hypernova. We have a Kia EV6 here waiting for us to charge. First thing you have to do with the Hypernova is tap the screen to get started, oops. And it's gonna tell you which connectors are available. Right now, both connectors are available. I'm gonna grab this one here and plug her in. Okay, now it says getting started. This just takes a moment. There's a communication process that's going on. The car is asking the charging station, how much power can you deliver? The charging station tells the car and then the car says, okay, I'll take X amount of power. That should start any minute now. Okay, so as you can see, we're drawing zero kilowatt right now, but that's gonna start to ramp up. Right now, we're just starting to charge there. The car's at 28% state of charge. You see the lights here light up. The way the Hypernova works is these lights will gradually climb up when the state of charge increases. Right now, we're at 28% state of charge. And, oops, let's start to, so we're about 28% of the light is lit up the side of the bar. Now, see, we're pulling 148, 150, 158. We're going all the way up. We're probably gonna get close to 200 kilowatt. The uh, EV6 can accept up to 230 kilowatt, but that's at a lower state of charge. Oh, wow, no, we're pulling 228 here, wow. So the Hypernova can deliver up to 400 kilowatt. The key EV6 can accept about 230. And guess what? We are at 230 kilowatt right now. So it's delivering just about the max that this car can pull in. Really good. So while I was there, I was able to snag Till Wilmshen, the director of DC Fast Charging for Wallbox, for a quick interview. We're here today in Wallbox's beautiful new Arlington, Texas factory, and I'm here with the director of DC Fast Charging for Wallbox, Till Wilmshen. And I'm going to ask you about this beautiful new unit we have behind me here. It's called the Wallbox New Hypernova. That's correct, yes. Tell us a little bit about this DC fast charger, Tell. Sure, it's a fast charging solution going up to 400 kilowatts. It can charge per user unit two cars at the same time. And per power cabinet, you can connect up to four uh, user units. So it's going really to the state of the art of maximum charging power. So one power cabinet can, can provide enough power for four of these units. Yes. So that, and will they all be able to, to deliver 400 kilowatts? No, so we have a total power available in one power cabinet of 400 kilowatts, okay, yeah. and this can be distributed uh, to max of four uh, gotcha. cars in okay. total. I that gotcha. can be and distributed over four user units. Right, and I notice it has two connectors, one on exactly. each side. Yes. Can you use both connectors at the same time? Yes, you can do okay. uh, that. So if you, have, for example, have a user unit with two outlets connected to one power cabinet, you could have one car charging at 400 kilowatts, or two cars charging at 200 kilowatt at the same time. Okay, and it'll it'll intelligently split the power. Exactly. Let's say I pull up in a Hummer EV and yes. I'm pulling 250 kilowatt. The yeah. other side is going to get 150 kilowatt. It's <laughs> it goes into step up to the the quarter of the total available power. So, for example, a 400 kilowatt, the steps that we distribute is 100 kilowatt. Okay, so in, in your example, if the Hummer charges at 250, yeah. the other one will charge a max at uh, 100 kilowatts. 100 kilowatts, okay. Yes. And it would work the same if these were two stations sharing power from exactly. one cabinet. Yes, so if, that's if, correct. In, in that situation, there's two stations sharing from one cabinet. Um, if just one car plugs in, it can yeah. get the full 400 kilowatts? It gets the full 400 kilowatts, okay. exactly. Right. And then it, yeah. it steps it down depending on how many other vehicles are there. Exactly, and also to mention here that we use liquid, co uh, liquid cooling technology. Yeah. This means the 400 kilowatts uh, can be used continuously, so without any derating over time. Okay, and um, how about for 400 volt battery systems? I know there's some charging stations advertise that they deliver X amount of power, but yes. when you pull up with a, a, a 400 volt battery system, you don't really get that full yeah. power. How, how, how does Hypernova work? So basically the, the standard, the uh, CCS standard limits maximum current. Okay, here we come a bit technical, but the maximum current to 500 ampere. 500 amp. Okay, so if a 400 volt vehicle would arrive, um, 400 volts times 500 ampere adds up to 200 kilowatts. Okay, so that's where the limit comes from. So we go to the max current that there's available, mm -hmm. and with liquid cooling we can do that constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's their limits. Right. So from what the summit says, with the voltage, and then we, the product eventually is the max power that you get. That's what I was trying to get mm. at. Is this a true 500 amp unit? And that, that was a roundabout yes. way of me asking you that question. Exactly. Because yeah, exactly. there are some units out there that have big signs that say 
200 kilowatts. Yeah. But that's if you have a, a thousand amp, hey, exactly. uh, hey, a, a thousand, thousand volt volts. battery system, exactly. because they only deliver 200 amps. Definitely. This will deliver the full 500 hey, exactly. amps. Okay. And with an 800 volt battery system, it will deliver 500 amps also. Also, that's and therefore the, we get to the 400 kilowatt. Right. Exactly. And, and it seems like everybody on the market now has 350 kilowatt units. Yes. What, what, what made you go to 400? Any particular reason? Yeah, particular reasons, we go to the maximum of the standard is allowed, standard yeah. allows, okay? So 500 amperes is the maximum of the CCS and allows, and the typical light, light duty vehicles go up to 800 volts, multiplying that is 400 kilowatts, okay? okay? So it's true that some vehicles only charge actually up to 700 uh, something volts and so on, so it, this adds up to the 350 eventually. Uh, but we 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 can we can go beyond that. Okay. Uh, and yeah. you're not installing these yourself and operating a network, right? You're just a manufacturer. You're going to sell them to say EVgo or ChargePoint or exactly. or uh, right or yeah. utility that's installing them. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we do a hardware that uh, can be integrated um, using a standard called OSPP. It can be integrated to any operator's backend, mm -hmm. uh, but yes, we do not. Uh, we're not an operator ourselves. Okay, so that means these will be plug-in charge or order charge enabled if the company operating them has exactly. that in their software. Yes. So okay. this product will come with a plug-in charge feature uh, on the market. Okay, exactly. very good. Now mm. I read about the in the press release that uh, it seems like you put a lot of effort into making the screen be very um, clear and visible, even in direct sunlight, because that's yeah. a problem with some of the current DC fast chargers. Yeah. You pull up, and you, you almost can't see the screens. It's really hard Definitely. for me when I do DC fast charge recordings, yes. but that's, a, that's another story. Well, um, tell us a little bit about the screen. Yes, so first of all, very important to, to notice that we from Warworks, we have a long years experience from home charging, so we know the end user very well. So even though our customer is the operator of the charger, we focus a lot on the end user. Okay, that's where these kind of things come from that we think about. And we use um, uh, on, a, on a daylight, um, if you have a lot of sun, we increase the brightness of the screen in that way so that you can really see the, the contrast of the screen. And it's uh, also slightly tilted in a way so that uh, if the user stands in front of it, that he has a good angle to, to see it. Okay, how long are the cables? Um, they come in this version not, but they will come at the center of 16 feet. 16 feet, okay, yes. so this is just on display. It's a exactly. little bit shorter, I noticed this one. Exactly, this like is much shorter, it will come at yeah. 16 feet and integrated cable management system. Okay, and that should be able to reach, you've tested, the yes. back of a car, the front of a Definitely. car, somebody yes. parks crooked, all yes. that stuff, because <laughs> you know that happens. Eh? Definitely, and also nowadays EVs also come already with trailers and so on, so they cannot, let's say, park backwards and so on, not adjust, so yeah. it becomes more and more important that you can really reach, let's say, the, the end of the, of the, the charging spot. Yeah. I, I noticed, and, and I just got here, but it looks like the units only have CCX connectors. Yes. Are you going to make this in a Chatemo version also? So we have decided not to. We go for CCS only. Uh, as Chatemo, first of all, it's uh, fading out in general in the market. Yeah. And secondly, it's not a fast charging standard. Okay, so even though the standard theoretically allows somewhere around 100 kilowatts, actually the cars available only charge around 50 kilowatts. And we see this product really is going for the fast charging um, sector, okay, the high power charging. We do uh, then suggest to if, if the public infrastructure requires a JDMO connector to add, for example, what we're going to later come as a supernova, that is in this power range, 50 to 150 kilowatt. This makes more sense in this power range. But this power range going up to 400 kilowatt, we decided it does not make yeah. sense. So yeah. the supernova you mentioned, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, you currently have those in production yes. and in use, but only in Europe. The, exactly. That's a lower power DC fast charger unit. Yeah. And what's the, how fast are those charged? So they go up to 150 kilowatt. Up to 150 okay, kilowatt. There's a, it's a different kind of concept. Well, this is uh, uh, what we call a centralized power system. You have the power cabinet of there and then several user units. The supernova is an all-in-one system, but only going to up to 150 kilowatts. Okay. So it's a different kind of concept. Um, but, okay. it, hmm. but this is the future for North America, the hype. The hype definitely, right? definitely. Because we're getting yeah. cars that can charge faster and faster yeah. all the time. Also what the administration's uh, climate packages subsidy program called Navy is asking for is this kind of charging these powers. Kind of charges, yeah. Yeah, which is smart yeah. for them to, to require the, yeah. the ultra high speed charges. Exactly. Um, yeah. So um, really quick, so this is great on the, on, on the Hypernova, but that's not the only equipment that Wallbox makes. Now, I, I've reviewed the Pulsar Plus. We really don't need to talk about that. Very good level two uh, home and commercial uh, yeah. charger. Uh, but you also are going to be introducing the Quasar 2, uh, you know, which um, I talked to Doug Alfaro about yeah. that 
three years ago yes. about the original Quasar, <laughs> and I was waiting and waiing and waiting, but it never came. Yeah. <laughs> but now, well, at least, you, I think you sold them in Europe for a little while. Yeah. But it never came to North America. And yeah. now you're coming out with the Quasar 2, which is a bi-directional DC charger that can yes. deliver up to 11.5 kilowatts. Yeah. Um, what's the status of that? When are we going to see that? When am I going to get one in my garage <laughs> so I can do a review? Honestly, Tom, I have to get back to that on, with my colleagues. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm not the expert of that product. Okay. Uh, I don't have the latest information, but right. for sure my colleagues we can give you the information on that. Okay. I'm not familiar on the exact release date of, in the US. Okay. Yeah. Fair, fair. You are yeah. the, the chief of DC. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I don't want, want to give you false lucky, information here. Something else <laughs> in there. I guess we're not getting that right now. I'll see if Doug yeah. can give me some information on that Definitely. later. Well, listen, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. I appreciate it. Good luck with Hypernova. I thank can't very much. wait to uh, try one out, and yeah. hopefully they'll get installed in uh, the New Jersey area yeah. so I can start doing some DC fast charge recording sure. something. Let's see if they fit in your in your laboratory, in your garage. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute here. Now I might be getting one in the state of charge garage. That, that'd, that be, be great. That, that'd be pretty good. Yes. I might have to hold you on that. I'm going to talk to Doug later. Anyway, Definitely. thanks again. All right. I appreciate thanks very much. It. Thanks for the great questions. All right. And now I've walked into the outbound warehouse. This is where Pulsar keeps the products after they're manufactured, before they're shipped out. As it is right now, this can hold about 22,000 wall box Pulsar Pluses. That's about 720 pallets on these shelves that you see behind me here. But once phase two of the build out of this facility is done, they'll actually be able to house about 33,000 finished Pulsar Pluses ready to be shipped out. So let's start selling more electric cars so Wallbox can make and sell more Pulsar Pluses. And now I'm standing in the unfinished section of the factory. This is gonna be phase two of the construction here and it's gonna allow Wallbox to up their production to over a million units by 2030. Okay, well that's it for our wall boxes factory grand opening here in Arlington, Texas. We hope you learned a little bit about the company, what they're doing and their products. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll reach out to Wallbox and try to get you the answers that you seek. If this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, ring that notification bell, subscribe to the channel, give us likes, all that good stuff. And as always, thanks for watching.